In this video, we will show you how to set up and start a new PCR run using the qPCR software for the Analytic Jena QTower Iris series. Once the main software screen is open, we can select from a new project, open an existing template, or open a safe project. For this video, we will show you how to set up a new project. Click the blue button in the upper left corner to begin a new protocol. Under the General tab, enter a title name for the project, as well as the operator's or user's name. Then, date and time will automatically be inserted. You can decide whether the check should be made before or after the measurements. You can also enter any comments regarding this project in the comments box below. From here, we will go to the Thermal Cycler tab. Begin by entering the desired protocol steps in the table shown at the bottom of the screen. When entering a time, simply type the desired number without the commas. For example, for 3 minutes, type 300. To repeat a cycle, select the go to box for the last step of that cycle. Type in the step number of the first step to be repeated. Next to the go to box, enter the number of loops or cycles to be repeated minus one. Since we have already run one cycle, the total number of repeats for that cycle will now be shown to the left of that cycle. To set a scanner measurement point, click the scan box within the appropriate step row. Temperature and time increments, as well as ramping rates, can also be adjusted as shown. Finally, to delete a step, click the Delete Step button at the top of the window. There, you can also add a new step, cut or copy a step. The QTower Iris preheated lid is automatically selected at a temperature of 100 degrees. This can be deselected by unchecking the preheat lid box and the temperature can also be adjusted up to 110 degrees. If necessary, select a simulated tube control. Moving to the graphical tab, we can see a graphical overview of the protocol here. The adjustments can be made by dragging the graph lines up or down or typing in different temperatures or times. Also, a column gradient function is available. Go to the Table tab and select the desired gradient step. Select Margin to input the temperature. In columns 1 and 12, the software will automatically divide the gradient among the 12 columns or select Linear to define the degree increment between columns as shown. Note that a gradient span of up to 40 degrees Celsius is available. To cancel the gradient, select Linear from the drop-down, then enter an increment of zero. Here we can see that our gradient has now been cancelled. If a melting curve is desired, after the amplification is complete, click the melting curve tab. Click the checkbox next to the active to activate the melting curve using the default settings or change any of the settings as desired. Here you can see the melting curve that is activated. Next, we will move to the Scan tab. Here, we will select the desired color channels to be scanned during the run. 
To select a channel, click on the corresponding measurement box. To deselect a channel, simply click again on the box. If a passive reference is desired, click on the corresponding passive reference box. To deselect a passive reference, simply click the appropriate passive reference box again. During each scan, each channel is measured three times by default and the average of the scans is taken. This can be adjusted by selecting from 1 to 16 repeats, but usually 3 is sufficient for a run. Color compensation can also be selected. This is used in case dyes with overlapping wavelengths are used in the same well. Moving through the sample tab, we can see the 96 well layout of the plate. Here we can select specific wells to define the sample types and characteristics. To begin, select the desired well or wells, then select the appropriate sample type. You can choose between unknown, standard, calibrator, NTC, positive control and negative control. Then Enter a sample name in the box, define a gene, and enter a concentration if the standard sample type is used. The units of the concentrations can be selected from the drop-down menu below. Once all the sample settings have been made, click the blue icon to the right of the sample name to finalize the settings or click Enter. While the sample properties can be selected prior to the run, it is recommended to define these either during or after the run to avoid errors and to save time. It is also possible to edit the layout in the table view down below. For this, you click into the different wells, for example, the sample name or the sample type, where you can use the drop-down menu to change the sample type. You can also type in the gene or change the standard concentrations. It is also possible to export the layout via right-clicking to the table and choose Export Table as Excel file and then an XLS file will be created. You can then make changes in Excel and then import the file again via right-clicking and import table from Excel file. And then you have your template as you saved it before. The template can also be saved. For this, go to File and then choose between Save Template as or Save Template. Changes can also be saved via this icon. And to open an existing template, you go to this icon or use the arrow to open an existing template that already has been opened before. From here, we move to the monitoring tab. After all the protocol settings have been verified as correct, click the play button at the top of the screen to begin the run. The results of the run can be viewed on the screen in real time and the remaining runtime will be shown below the graph. And with this, I'm at the end of my tutorial on how to set up a qPCR soft experiment in a qPCR soft 5.